Today we're going to be going over Bash aliases. This is going to be the first in what I hope to be a long-running series of Linux tutorials where I share best practices and productivity hacks. I'm Jasper. I'm a professional system engineer as well as a self-admitted Linux nerd. So uh, that's a combination that's a little bit rare, uh, rarer than it should be in this industry. And um, let's get started. Um, so first of all, today we're going over aliases. Um, aliases are a way to reduce the strain of typing complex commands. If you're familiar with Linux at all, you know that uh, the terminal is where the rubber meets the road. And so any kind of um, uh, productivity bonus uh, you can implement, uh, any kind of simplification uh, of sometimes very complex and re repetitive terminal commands uh, is, can only help you. Um, so let's get started. Uh, first of all, the alias keyword itself is a bash built in. So I'm using bash right now. Um, I'll probably be going over other shells eventually, but for now, uh, in this series of tutorials, I'm going to be focusing on bash, which is the most common shell. Um, and, uh, as we can see, when you run alias without any arguments, it produces a list of all the aliases that have already been set. Um, most of these, almost all of these are default. As you can tell, I'm running Fedora. Uh, most of these have already been programmed in by the maintainers of the Fedora distribution. And, um, as you can quickly tell, a lot of these have to do with color. Um, and actually alias is often used in Linux distributions to provide sensible defaults for older commands, especially to implement color output. Grep and LS, um you know, are older, they date back decades, and uh, although they do implement color output, um, alias is used to kind of automatically put that in as a sensible default. Um, the Fedora maintainers actually missed one, so if I run IPA to display my IP address, or at least the IP addresses that are associated with my configured network interfaces, um, I can see that the output is bland um uh, not colorized and the ip is uh, one of these commands even though it's it's newer than grep and ls that does implement colorized output but it uh, you have to provide an explicit option <coughs> and we can see if we if we if we provide tack color or dash color uh, the output's a lot better a lot easier on the eyes um more legible so what we can do is uh actually implement our new alias um and uh, as you can tell, uh, you provide the shorthand, the alias, and then the value after an equal sign. And you're pretty much always, always, uh, almost always going to need to put um, the value in quotes because you're probably putting spaces in there. And um, that's just what you got to do. Um, once we implement that alias, when we run alias again, we see that IP is in there. Um, and uh, and yeah, and it, to remove an uh, an alias, um, we use the unalias command. And uh, after running that, we see that the IP alias that we had just programmed has been removed. Um, and we can actually specify multiple aliases to remove. I'm going to remove all the ones associated with the ls command. And now when I run alias, we see that all the ls aliases have been removed. Um, and now we go to what's maybe a, a more fun implementation of alias, and that's to implement, uh, incorporate drop, drop in replacements for some of these older commands. In recent years, there's been a trend of reprogramming or re-implementing some of the old tried and true GNU utilities like ls and grep in particular and coding them from scratch uh, in a new programming language making an alternative that's much more performant and faster um, now as far as for whether or not you would notice any sort of difference in performance uh, in most use cases that's a different question but uh, these alternatives all are available and one of these is easy a um, so easy a uh, like most of these drop-in replacements, is programmed in Rust. It's supposedly uh, fancier, nicer, faster than LS. Um, and one thing that we can notice when we use EZA, 
uh, and compare it with the output of LS is that uh, it's colorized by default, which is good. Um, uh, I mean, in this, uh, you know, without any further options, it's not that big of a deal. Um, but if we provide EZA L and uh, also provide an additional option to allow EZA to uh, display icons, and we compare that with LS's output, and even if we allow LS to provide colorized output, we can tell that um, EZA's output is infinitely uh, superior to that of the default LS. So what we're going to do is we're going to implement a few um, aliases um, so that we can use EZA from the command line without having to remember to type in EZA. And I'm going to just uh, type in a few And now what we what we have here is um, we've basically implemented a drop and replacement. We have a, a, a fancier tool uh, with colorized output that we can use without an interruption to our workflow. Um, so if I run ls or ll, I get to take advantage of the features of EZA without having to go through the trouble of remembering that and relearning uh, all my old habits as a Linux administrator. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.